Hi, my name is Frank Chen. I'm the CEO and CTO of XSN. So we want to welcome to you uh, Embedded World 2023. And. Um, what do you do at the in the embedded world? So we are uh, we are a storage uh, provider. So we we do full service custom storage for industrial, aerospace, um, automotive, and cinema. So we're here to showcase our storage products. And um, it's like high reliability when you be in it. Industrial products, uh, flash storage is a great way to do industrial. Yes, so compared to a tra traditional HDDs where they are kind of perceptible, or they're susceptible to vibration, shock, you know, different um, air pressure. So SSDs, flash, they are made of completely made of ICs. So they're not su su susceptible to any shock and vibration, any any thermal issues, any any altitude issues, so this is where we build high reliability storage. So, so what are we looking at here? So what we're looking at here is an industrial grade um, solid state drive. So this this is our own custom design where we design all of the hardware, the firmware, we do all the testing internally, we do all of our own manufacturing. It supports up to eight terabytes and very low power. So compared to a traditional uh, HDD, where you see like a 3.5, 3.5 inch HDD, that's about you know four to five times the, the size of a 2.5 inch. We can store much more, uh, much more capacity. It's, a, it's got a much higher uh, storage density compared to HDDs. Are there algorithms you can work on to make things more reliable and the data to be safe? Yes, no matter definitely. what. Definitely. There's um. Basically, we own all of the firmware, so we develop all of our hardware and we, we write all of our firmware for, the, for SSDs. So that, that includes several important critical components like flash management, um, data, uh, data integrity, and data security. So we also implement RAID functionality on our SSDs so that we can recover data in the, in the background transparently in case there are data corruption or some, something happened to the data. What is the whole process of uh, uh, getting data out of a broken device or device that has an issue? How does so, it work to, to, to uh, yeah, so, recover? So like um, most of the vendors will tell you that you cannot recover data from a broken SSD, which is quite incorrect because if you own all, the, all of the base technology from the hardware to the firmware, then you should be able to recover the data. So in an event, Something like this, um, the data needs to be retrieved from this. Or maybe something hardware. So there's some hardware issue with this drive. We we take apart the case and then we'll actually connect the drive with our debugging tool. From the debugging tool, we'll we'll be able to reinitialize the drive and initiate the drive recovery process. And you sometimes include that. Yes. As part of the service. Yes, we include data recovery as part of our differentiated service because we're able to do to do to go much more beyond file system level data recovery going to hardware level data recovery and firmware level data recovery. And you have data recovery around the world? Yes, we, um, we support this by either remote recovery or you can, uh, we can have FAE on site to do the recovery or you can send in a device to us. Uh, we can do a fa factory level data recovery. And there's many different kinds of storage that you do, huh? Yes, yes. So for industrial, we have uh, various form factors. This is a 2.5 inch, which is optimized for thermal. So that means you can operate without any thermal solutions or like, you know, fans or air, air flows to cool off the drive, it'll be able to run at full speed at 85C, okay? So these are M.2, 2280, 2242, and 2230, so they, they don't have a casing, so additional thermal solution needs to be applied. And we work with our customers to to come up with the, the most optimum um, solution for for thermal mitigation. In addition, we. We also have our firmware ATC algorithm, which automatically adjusts performance to ensure that the drive operates at an optimum performance in any thermal condition. Because uh, these kind of storage products can get pretty hot. Yes. Uh, it's one of the things, sometimes I touch the SSDs yes. and stuff, it's pretty hot and yes. uh, it's a challenge. Yes, it is. To design things correctly. Yes. So really, it starts off from the component. Uh, we don't. We don't do, we don't use, we don't, we don't sort commercial flash and build them as industrial grade. So these, all of our components are industrial grade. So we, 
we buy industrial controllers from our um, SSD vendor, uh, SSD controller vendor. We buy um, industrial grade flash, and we also package our own industrial grade flash. Because um, so, so sometimes the, the the amazing magic factories that kind of make SSD, NAND, and all this stuff, uh, they also have patents and certain ways of doing things, uh -huh. and you can use those or do differently, customize the way the algorithms are designed. Yes, so, uh, so basically, we have our own patents on how we manage our flash, how we optimize our performance. So we filed over 70 patents worldwide <laughs> on, on our SSD technology. Nice. Yes. And you're tightly collaborating with the R&D of the next gen, I guess. Yes. Because the yes. way you design the memory, you have to think about firmware early, about how you yes. want to design it, right? Yes. So we work very closely with our controller vendor, which is Marvell. On their, on their next generation, on their future roadmap controllers, and we work very closely with the NAND flash vendors, like Kyosha, WD, and Micron, Samsung, and Hynix. And do they sometimes uh, collaborate with you on the end product, like uh, even they might use themselves as separately? Or um, do you, you only keep your expertise for only your brand? We're open to collaboration, um, but mostly we do our own, And but we, we collaborate with a lot of partners, um, they're, they're, they're not necessarily flash vendors or controller vendors, but we, we work with partners like NVIDIA, uh, Mercedes, we work with partners like QNAP, you know, to, to, build, to help them build and help, help ourselves build ecosystems for, for storage, for flash so when storage. Pe people buy a self-driving car or uh, EV or, or some cool products, I'm not going to ask exactly what, but they might be your storage in some of the cool products in the world. Yes, some, some of the... Our storage is in some of the most unexpected places um, for high performance and high capacity applications. So it could be somewhere, you know, flying in the air. It could be in space. Low, Maybe low, low orbit satellites. You know, uh, airplanes. Uh, you know, under underwater exploration, uh, oil and gas, automotive, industrial, medical. You name it. We're pretty much we're pretty much in there. So all these guys developing cutting edge things, they know how to contact you and say, hey, I need, I need this performance, and you might be able to provide it. Yes, and not only that, but not only do we do cutting edge, we also do trading edge, because our goal is to serve our customers, no matter what their needs are. So as long as we are able to provide differentiated service, whether it be performance, capacity, power, or security, or you know, any other features that our customer want, we'll, we're happy to implement for them and support them. Nice. Can you show some of the other yes. storage products you so have here? Th this is a unique product that we have. Uh, it's the PI4 Series E1.S. So it's the first of its kind. It's an it's a enterprise form factor uh, storage, but optimized for industrial, industrial and automotive applications. So for industrial, it's minus 40 to 85 with uh, encryption, TCG OPPO. And for automotive, we actually added conformal coding and we added BJ underfill so that it's it's um, so it's shock and vibration optimized and it's protected against the uh, elements like salt, uh, you know, humidity and things like that. So this could be in some amazing cars, uh, or, or airplanes, or boats. Yes, all kinds. Yes. Nice. What next? What next do you want to show? Uh, so well, next we probably want to show you. Um, Oh, this is still, we got our, oh, oh. It's uh, durable. Yeah, well, <laughs> this is a, our automotive grade PCIe 2.5 inch U.2. So again, like, like, like we said, we have, auto, we have BGA underfill, we have conformal coding. Um, this is up to eight terabyte. And this runs at about half or one third of a typical data center SSD. So, so the whole drive runs at 7.5 watts. So it's, it runs very cool. Um, it's optimized for you know minus 40 to 85 wide, wide range of temperature. Let's say uh, I buy the best 2024 affordable uh, self-driving EV. Why does it need to have so much storage? What is an e electric car, for example, doing with all the storage? Actually, most uh, most most production cars don't need don't need that much storage. They probably only need maybe up to 512 gigabytes of storage. But these are actually right now used by um, the car makers to, to log a lot of 
autonomous data, uh, ADAS data logging. Because they cannot just upload all this, it's a lot of data, it's too much for upload. Yes, it's too much for upload to the cloud, so they need a, a, a very high, high performance, high capacity local cache to store that data that they, that they can later take that and upload to the data center. All right, so it's specially, special development cars, maybe? Yes, yes, yes. It's not necessarily mass production. Yes, for, for mass production, we actually have another line of products. They're called BG SSDs. So they're BG PCIe SSDs um, built for pr uh, production level cars. So they're smaller in capacity, but also very high in performance. Nice. And uh, it could be like Formula One car that, that could be tested. And while they're testing it and optimizing it, they want to store th thousand different sensor data yes, on the car it, while they race around. Here. Yes, it'll be Maybe. stored on, on these drives. Potentially. Yes. Right. I'm selling Samsung, but what is the Well, uh, the, these are our automotive gray SATA drives, so they're a little bit slower than um, PCIe, but they, but they also come with the same, you know, shotgun vibration, environmental protection, um, at a SATA um, eight terabyte. So they're still very high performance, but um, not maybe not so high compared to PCIe, but they're also very low power, so they're about one third of the power consumption of, of, of PCIe. Nice. Yeah. So for those applications that doesn't require very high data rates, but very high capacity, maybe they want to store you know, large amounts of data over a long time, a long period of time, that would be an ideal solution. Because um, Flash, uh, 3D, NAND, all this stuff, sounds amazing. The question is, how long is it going to last? I have so many hard drives, I don't know if they still work. Well, uh, like, uh, it's hard to, can you give a number? Yeah, so we believe that with the, with the proper firmware, um, if you store at room temperature, um, these drives will last you at least, um, you know, once you store it, once you put the data on there, um, these, these drives will last you at least five years. With the, with the proper algorithms to, um, to make sure that the, to, to, to ensure that the retention hold up over time. Do you think if somebody finds this in 100 years, it, there's a chance it still works? Uh, that would be kind of iffy, actually. <laughs> yeah, unless you're running this in a, like a, like a lower bit, bit mode, like PSLC mode, then it's probably more likely. Um, as long as you don't put too, many, too much data, um, too, too much, uh, if you don't wear out the, the drive too much, like in terms of writing too much data to it, uh, and if you put it in PSLC mode, I think it may be able to last that, that long. I did that video once with some researchers. They were talking about 3D NAND, and it sounds so fascinating, but it sounds like potentially you could one day maybe get more storage than hard drives for cheaper, or is that not going to happen? Uh, we're is seeing it going to overtake happening? at some point? Well, we're seeing that happening for one terabyte. I mean, at one terabyte below, we're seeing the, the, uh, the SSD cost is actually getting lower than HDD. So I think as we continue to scale, uh, scale down on the, or scale up on capacity, maybe within a two, three years, it'll be two terabyte and, and keep going. So we, I do see that happening. Um, and there's, when I, and we do see there's gonna be scaling limit on HTDs, you know, in terms of how much capacity can actually carry. Is there a chance that the capacity might exceed hard drive? Oh, like, I think it's could very you possible. suddenly overtake and be like a, 80 terabytes or yes. something. So, you know, by the end of this year, we'll have a 2.5 inch that's 32 terabyte. So, end of this year. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So it's 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 very uh it's pretty much overtaking to, kind of. Huh? It's kind of like overtaking. Yes, but it gets kind of expensive. So, so not yeah. on a cost wise, but on de definitely on the capacity, I mean, on a form factor because like most most uh, HDDs are three and a half inch, right? So this is two and a half. So um, um, per, per volume density, the storage density of SSD is already way past um, HDD. There's no chance you can make some 32 terabytes that are affordable? That'd be so cool. Yeah, maybe <laughs> 10 years from now. I'll throw all my hard drives away. Oh, well, actually, um, in my household, I don't have any hard drives left. Oh, wow. So I recently upgraded my NAS with our eight terabyte SATA, and it was a very enjoyable experience because now you can re rebuild RAID at at least a hundred times faster than 
running our HDD. But you need at least two, you know? Yeah. You need to mirror so I, everything. So I, I bought five. I got, got five. It, I got a discount because we build drives. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. That must be really fast. Yeah. So what are you the, showing here? So these are in, industrial SATA. I think um, they're minus 40 to 85. Um, kind of like the automotive, except without the coating and the, and the, and the BG Interfilm. So these are very, very, very small factors of SATA, the M SATA, the 2280s. Yeah. Uh, you actually do show rockets. Yes, well, airplanes. Because they vibrate a lot. Yes, yes. So, so the, our connectors, they have to be um, MIL 8, 8110D certified. Uh, we also build custom storage where we actually build um, ethanol. Uh, our, our, our drives are actually built with ethanol or um, SAMTEC connectors. That's shock and thermal, um, shock and vibration um, re resistant. Nice, it sounds awesome. Yes. Uh, this kind of technology, these cables, uh, sometimes I've seen, like in the video world, I've seen sometimes they have a HDMI with the screws, you kind of screw them so it doesn't fall out. Yes, yes, yes. But you have the similar kind of stuff for yes, yes. SATA connectors and everything? Uh, actually, for um, we're, we're building one that's um, not, not just for SATA and PCIe, but we're building one USB storage that has um, automotive grade USB, so it's it's protected against shock and vibration. Nice. Cool. Yeah. Uh, what's next you want to show here? Well, um, since you're using camera, we can show yeah. talk about cinema SD cards, micro SD cards. Because your your market is uh, all the professional video makers yes. also. Yes, we we have a big market on cinema, so you can buy our products on Amazon, on, on you know on on the e-commerce platforms, and so we want to showcase our industrial grade C-Express and C-Fast cards. So they can go up to two terabyte for C-Express and one terabyte for C-Fast. So like I said, you know, we are leading the edge, the leading, we are leading edge on C-Express, but we are also continue, continue to support our trading edge technology like C-Fast. Now this is really high bitrate video su supported on these. Yes. Uh, it says max sequential Oh, that's C-Fast. And yeah, you want to look at C, C Express. This one? Yes. Uh, you so have we can right. do 1500 megabytes second or 1.5 gigabytes sustained with the, with the proper cooling. That's a lot of, uh, that's a big. A lot of pictures. A big raw 8K video. Yes. So 8K 120, I don't know, something. Uh, 8K is probably uh, two gigabytes. So it's getting close to two, it's getting close to uh, 8K. Yeah. So you're going to support it. Well, when all these cameras come available soon, there's already some, but uh, when more and more cameras become available, um, you'll have the storage for it. Yes, so we actually support uh, Canon R5, R3. We support the Nikon Z9. We're the fastest card for my Nikon Z9. Um, we also support you know, the Panasonic uh, GH6. And we also have a certified card with uh, RED, one of the premier Hollywood cameras for, for, for filmmaking. These, these red guys, they do a lot of 8K stuff, no? Oh, yes. Well, um, right now they're not 8K yet, but the, the CF Express, the, the CF Express will be able to support um, 8K in, in the future. I always kind of like on these forums with rumors, when people chat about the next generation cameras, I wondered if they could do RAID recording, uh, like not just copying, but speeding up when you have two. Yes, yes. When you have two cards, uh -huh. If it's 1,500 plus 1,500, and at the same time you might even have multiple copies. So that would be a little challenging for for the camera vendors because that's a lot of power consumption. But um, with the CFSpec cards, what's different about CFSpec versus micro SD and SD is the controller is much more powerful. So they can do a lot more uh, for the user in terms of data protection, in terms of um, data integrity. So. Um, with Safe Express, we, we're pretty confident that you don't you don't even need to do backups anymore. Just one card will be enough. And if something goes bad, we still have our data recovery service that can help users recover their data. Because with my SD cards, I like to do dual recording. Yes. But that's yes. the SD card is a different. Yes. Different controller. The controller is say? completely different. Yes. It's much. It's it's a much more cost conscious controller compared to PCIe. So. Um, the capability is also limited, especially on air correction. Yeah. And you also have the small one, huh? the Type A. Yes, we, have, we, we also have the Type A card. Um, yeah. Right. That's 
right here. So for the Taipei card, uh, we, we took a different route uh, compared to Sony. We actually did, did all of our own, P own PC, PCB design and we did all of our own casing design. So um, so that, that's where we uh, were able to push you know, the limits of CF, CF Taipei limit uh, capacity pretty high there. So, so what's your capacity there? So right now we're offering up to uh, 480 gigabyte on the Taipei, but very soon we'll, we'll offer one terabyte. Wow. Yeah. And is that going to be the best Type A? One terabyte? We believe it will be a very good um, cost performance uh, for, for the Type A market. Yeah. And it's also, also, also very low power. But in the Sony, for example, the A7 uh, S3, they have dual slots. Yes. So you backup record to those Type A. So it's actually, um, for Sony cameras, there's actually limits on what you can do with the backup recording because um, on SD card side, the most you can do is V90. So you cannot record very high resolution at V90 rates. So even if you want to you know, back up on your SD card, there's certain resolution that would not be doable. But if you have two, they have two slots for the Type-A, I think. Oh, if they, well, if they have two slots, then they can do backup. But I'm not sure if they can support two slots at the same time. Right. Because it's a lot of power. Well, it's not, it's not a power, and you, and you, need, you need to design with two PCI, uh, with two PCI lanes, which I'm not sure if Sony supports that or not. So, so Canon has been doing some AK cameras, like the R5, I think it's called, and all yes, that. Yes, and the R3, and they're gonna have an R1. And you totally support those. Yes, you yes. have great storage for them. Yes, yes. And. Uh, you have a lot of customers in the U.S. and uh, Europe or yes. Asia or where? Yeah, we have a lot of customers across these three big regions. And you can go on the Amazon for these regions and they will be there? Yes, so Amazon is our main uh, outlet uh, for uh, and BNH. Amazon BNH uh, are, are our main outlet for media card type of uh, products, but then Mouser is more for our, our B2B uh, products like the uh, how about industry. a camera store that wants to resell those? They just contact you and place a big order and... Uh, normally we have our distributor in the, in, in the US. Our distributor in the US is One Source Video. So that's where, you know, we supply all of our cards to One Source and they can distribute it for us in the, in the US. And here I see a rugged SSD. Oh yes, uh, this is a portable SSD that we, that we developed for the cinema world. And but it's, uh, the, the creators, content creators, definitely need to get on board with these kind of uh, yes. rugged SSDs. Yeah, so so basically it's IP67 water and dust proof, so you can take this anywhere. Like, you know, if anywhere where there's water, dust, humidity, salt, it's well protected um, for that kind of uh, use environment. And we build a very high capacity drive um, uh, storage for this USB, it's up to eight terabyte. So imagine, you know, you, the amount of content you can put onto this drive, and because it's such a high capacity, we are, we 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 really designed this to be high performance. So it's about we can sustain two gigabytes per second at you know 50 to 60 degrees Celsius room two temperature. Two gigabytes per second. Yes. What is the connection? Because um, I, I have one of these M1 Pro MacBooks, and they say they support 40 gigabyte uh, gigabit per second. That's a Thunderbolt. Uh, but. I don't know if there's any external hard drives that support the 20 or something. Yes, this is this supports 20. 20 for sure. 20 for on sure. Those MacBooks. Uh, on the new MacBooks, probably. Yeah. So, so you, because they were talking about USB 3.2 Gen 2 or something. By two. Yes. This is USB 3.2 Gen 2 by two. Oh, it is supporting that. Yes. Yes. So you totally got the 20, because some yes. of these Sandisk products. SanDisk was saying is 20, but actually it's only supported 10 gigabits yeah, yeah. So on the MacBooks. So what's so different about this storage is we don't use SLC cache to to show like a bursty performance. Like, you know, like you can do two gigabyte for two seconds and the rest is one, one gigabyte or even less. We try to make sure that you can record across the whole drive at a sustained two gigabyte per second data rate. So what that means, what that means is really you can offload, or you can you can you can load the whole drive in one hour. Eight terabytes of data in one hour. That's so amazing. That's so you know I, I know a lot of a lot of cinematographers complain to us about oh how they are using HDD. It takes them forever to transfer media. With this, you get at least twenty x 
acceleration on data offload. And so you, that means you have the controller in there that supports that latest USB yes. gen and stuff? Yes, so we have a, we optimize the whole performance, power, thermal, to, to be used for you know, USB Type-C. What's amazing with that solution is that people should get the MacBook with not so much internal storage, just get one of those, oh, yes. and then they can do all their video editing, 4K60, off the external, fully smooth, yes. same experience like if it's internal. Maybe even faster. Maybe, Maybe even, even faster. faster. We, we, we're actually pretty confident that it's, it should be faster. Because uh, NAND flash is, performance is, is limited by capacity, so at eight terabyte, you have no performance limit. It can saturate the USB 3.2 Gen, uh, Gen 2 by 2. Because the M1, M2, M2 chips that Apple is selling, pretty amazing, but it's nice for them to keep the storage external, so yeah. you dissipate the, 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 the heat, keep it outside your MacBook, not only and that. save some money and put the money in the external storage. Not only you probably that. get more per, per dollar. Yeah, not only that, they charge quite a bit for, for an additional yeah. 256 and 512 gigabyte, right? Extreme. So you, think about it, for the same money, you can get eight yeah. terabytes, and it, it, and it runs faster. I always choose the lowest one, yeah. and I want to go for the external, exactly. and get much more storage exactly, exactly. per dollar. So people use this for direct video editing, you know, like high cool. def video editing. And there in the front, you, you, you have a demonstration you're showing at your booth. Oh yes. Um, this is so. Pretty much, this is what we're what we're doing with uh, uh, conformal coding. So, so, so the drive is conformal coded, and it'll operate as if you're you no. Know, it's not in water. Is it something like um, what they were talking about, P2I, or these these kind of guys that are putting it in some kind of oven? and then it gets coded by something? Yes, so we, we actually have an automated manufacturing process that coats the, the PCB with a humid seal. And then it's cured in an oven for about two hours. And once that's done, then the, like a, a, a protective coating forms on the PCB that protects against water. But that's not all your storage, right? Some uh, of them. Some of them. It's, it's an optional manufacturing process. And then um, that's the ultimate liquid cooling. <laughs> well, we don't really need the liquid cooling because the drives are actually fairly low power. Yeah, no need to liquid cool. Yeah, <laughs> but no, it it no. can. You're showing that it works, and you're showing that it just keeps working even though it's in the water. Yes, yes. Cool. So a busy embedded world. Yes. Lots thank of uh, potential yes. uh, uh, embedded industry people yeah, talking we're, to you about. Yeah, we're excited to be storage. back here. Last year the crowd wasn't as many as much as here uh, this year. So we're looking forward to meeting more customers and um, you know, sharing with them more of our, of our products and um, services.